Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today, we're talking failing thermostats. All right, so today we're talking about one of the more simple parts on a car, but a part that actually holds a lot of responsibility, and that's the thermostat. This thermostat is actually out of a 2.0 FSI engine, a BPY, of a roughly 2007 Volkswagen Passat. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsche Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of really great DIY videos. These guys are an awesome part of the VW Audi community. So check them out at shopdap.com. All right, so let's start off by talking about what a thermostat is. So the thermostat is part of the engine cooling system. And by opening and closing, it can help regulate the temperature of the engine. And not only will it help keep the engine cool when the engine's warm, it can actually help the engine warm up even faster. And the way it does that is by opening and closing. If the thermostat opens, it allows coolant to flow, cooling off the engine. And when it's closed, it stops coolant flow to heat the engine up faster. Like I mentioned, it's such a simple part, but holds a lot of responsibility for your engine. So inside here is a tiny wax pill. As that wax heats up, it expands and opens the thermostat, which you'll see right here. You'll notice there's two springs. These springs will help keep the thermostat closed, as closed as its normal state. So whether it's open a little bit, open a lot, or completely closed, that's what helps manage the coolant flow in your engine. Now, like I mentioned, this is out of a BPY engine. That's only one style of thermostat. This is actually part of an entire housing and is not serviceable separate. What I did was I went ahead and cut the housing open so that you guys could get a better look and a better understanding of just what the thermostat looks like. There are other types. There are electronic ones. I know the W8 was kind of the first Volkswagen or an early Volkswagen anyway that had an electronically regulated thermostat. Many newer Volkswagen engines don't have a separate serviceable thermostat. Like this one, they're all built into a housing. So in order to replace this part, you actually have to replace the entire thermostat. This is bolted to the engine block and sits in the engine like this. The alternator would be sitting right here. This is where it bolts up to the block. There's a port in the block for it to bolt to. And the water pump is right on the other side. We have the lower coolant hose and then two upper coolant hoses as well. So how does a thermostat fail? Well, it fails in one of two ways generally. It'll either fail stuck open or stuck closed. When the thermostat sticks open, what that means is that right here is open. And we'll see that in just a minute. And what that does is that allows coolant to continuously flow through the engine. You can actually end up with an underheating condition of the engine because the coolant is actually too cool. This can also result in low heat output inside the cabin of your vehicle. The other way it can fail is stuck closed. This is the way that most people are familiar with a thermostat failing. When a thermostat fails closed, it doesn't allow coolant to the engine. So it doesn't allow coolant to pull the heat away from the engine and generally, not always, but generally results in an engine overheating condition. And while not having heat in your cabin is kind of a pain and an underheated engine actually doesn't run as efficient as it should, an overheating engine can definitely result in catastrophic engine failure. So how do we know we may have a failing thermostat? Well, I mentioned a couple of the symptoms just a minute ago. When we have a stuck open thermostat, generally what we'll see is either our temp gauge doesn't get to where it's supposed to be or our heat isn't working very well. Stuck closed, a lot of times we'll see an engine overheating condition. But the big reason that we see, and the reason this thermostat was replaced, was for a check engine light. And we'll generally get a code P2181 for a malfunction in cooling system. The car's ECM is looking for an increase in coolant temperature over time. It'll use the coolant temp sensor to monitor the coolant temperature in the engine. And if it doesn't see the coolant temperature get to a point where it's warm enough fast enough, or it doesn't see it get hot enough, period, then it'll turn the check engine light saying, hey, you got something going on, you need to inspect it. You know, as a technician, I'll go in, I'll punch in the scan tool and check fault. I'll see that P2181 fault for malfunction in cooling system. Now I know that I have something going on in the cooling system. And oftentimes when you see that fault where the verbiage is malfunctioning cooling system, it is related to a thermostat issue. That doesn't mean it's always a thermostat issue, but it does mean that a lot of times it is. So how do we diagnose a failing thermostat? Well, if we have a check engine light on, it's gonna get pretty easy because we at least have some guidance from our engine's computer on what to do. 
Now, like I mentioned, the thermostat sits in the housing like this. This is the lower hose. Like I mentioned, it was not a serviceable thermostat, so I had to cut it open. But one of the really common things with a failing thermostat is this lower radiator hose will actually be cool to the touch and considerably cooler in temperature than the upper hoses would be. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to get to the upper hoses of this thermostat housing and put your hand on it because these are buried underneath the intake manifold and behind the alternator. But you probably can get to this one and lay your hand on it and go, wow, the engine's hot, it's been running for 30 minutes. You'd expect all the coolant hoses to be warm, but this one is ice cold. And that's not the only thing that can show you you have a failing thermostat, but it is a really common one. Again, the check engine light gets really easy because it tells you what area you need to look in. Now, there are other issues that can cause underheating concerns as well as overheating concerns. So if you have one of those concerns, you may need a little bit more diagnosis. I wouldn't necessarily just jump to a failing or bad thermostat. So is a thermostat a DIY? Well, maybe. It really all depends on which engine. On the BPY, it's not that bad of a job. You do have to remove the alternator, disconnect battery power from the car, so there's a couple things, but nothing that's really all that hard. There are other engines where it's not that bad either. In fact, I did a video on how to replace it in the VR6. And as you'll see, it wasn't really that bad of a job. There are a few that I'll caution you are pretty big DIY jobs. Things like the V8 Torag and the V6 Passat. The thermostat is hidden behind the timing belt. So you're going to have to take the timing belt off in order to get to the thermostat. And a lot of times that's a really big DIY. There are, however, a few cars where I wouldn't really say it's a DIY. The W8 Passat is sort of the one that comes to mind where the thermostat is buried underneath the intake manifold and you have to take the intake manifold off. There's all kinds of warnings about guide pins in the intake manifold that can fall down into the cylinder. So I don't know if I'd jump on that one as my first DIY thermostat. But then there's the other side of it where like the two liters aren't that bad at all. Even the TSI engines, which is another one where it's modular, it's built into the water pump housing, they're not really that hard to do. It all depends on obviously your skill level and what the engine of the vehicle is. All right, so we spent a lot of time talking about thermostat, what it does, how it fails, what it looks like. You've seen it right here live and in person. So I'm gonna heat up some water and let's see it in action. So here we have our water. You can see it's plenty hot enough to make this thermostat open. Now, as I drop the thermostat in, almost instantly you'll see the thermostat start to open. And because the coolant temperature is so high, or because the water temperature of this is so high, it'll open rather fast. This is actually a great way to test the thermostat, but the only problem is this does require you to remove the thermostat from the vehicle and test it that way. So we're basically testing it independent from the vehicle. And that's not always the most accurate test. Like I mentioned, we put a thermostat in this car for a malfunction and cooling system fault, and it opened this time. But who knows what happens? Does it open every time? Does it not open when it's below a certain temperature? Does it stick open? I don't really know all the details of what happened with this particular one. But while this is a great way to watch a thermostat open and close, it's not always the best way to do the test, especially because we eliminate the vehicle from the system. As you can see, when we take it out of the water, it will rather rapidly begin to close. So that gives you a good idea of just how temperature sensitive this tiny little contraption really is. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I was gonna make a crack about the drink of the day being this, but that would just be stupid. So drink of the day, I've really been on this hot tea kick it, uh, it's perfect for the cool weather out in the shop. And I'm glad you guys liked my teabag joke from like four or five shows ago.